Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Crypto News Podcast. It's your host, Matt Zahab. We are buzzing as always, and I am super pumped to have the one and only Bob Rass on the show today, co-founder of Sologenic, a sophisticated ecosystem built on top of the XRP ledger that facilitates investing and trading between crypto and non-blockchain assets such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, and more from the top 30 plus global stock exchanges. Alongside his work at Sologenic, Bob also co-founded Corium, the third generation layer one smart blockchain built to serve as a core infrastructure for future blockchain appliances, a true serial entrepreneur who has established several ventures within manufacturing tech and blockchain industries. Bob has been a keynote speaker at many reputable blockchain summits, including Malta AI and the Future Blockchain Summit in Dubai. And he's coming in hot from the west coast of my own country, Canada. Bob, super pumped to have you on. Welcome to the show. How you doing, my friend? I'm, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me today, Matt. Pumped to have you on here. You and the team have built something absolutely electric at Sologenic, a true behemoth and i can't wait to get into that but before we do you've done some incredible and crazy shit in your lifetime you are a true builder you set an idea to something you make it happen you make that magic pop we absolutely love to see that give us a little bit of background on yourself what you've done maybe a little bit about your childhood what what about tech tickles your fancy so much some of the crazy and cool things you built and then we'll get into sologenic corium and some of the fun crypto stuff Thank you, Matt. Uh, yeah, a little bit about, about my childhood. Uh, I was born in a family that my, my dad was one of the very first C++ uh, engineer. Uh, I'm talking about um, probably 30, 35 years ago. He was one of the very first C++ engineer in the world. Wow. Uh, so I grew up with computer around me. I can remember the very first time that uh, my dad brought a computer home, it was actually the size of a room. <laughs> so we had a room. It was just massive. a computer room. A computer room. <laughs> just a computer. So we had a room actually, and the, the computer was there. So the whole room, it was a massive, massive computer. You know, fast forward, uh, you know, I I actually got involved into uh, manufacturing. You know, it's a little bit surprising, but uh, um, I got into manufacturing the, you know, around um, 2008. I was pretty young. Uh, so the way that I've done that, probably many people, they're not really aware of that. So what I've done uh, you know, during those days, I actually hired a team of scientists and they came up with a formula for me. Uh, you know, I sent them to the lab. They came up with a formula. We patterned the formula. Uh, and then we took the formula to China. We started manufacturing, you know, that product. Uh, that's how I really got into the business. And uh, again, I was pretty young. I was about 23, 24 years old <laughs> during that time. And uh, so after a few years, you know, we, we've done very well. You know, we, we used to uh, export to over 68 countries during those days, which was a success. So the factory that we used to work with, we used to use them as an outsourcing factory. They, uh, they actually gave us an offer, you know, to purchase uh, some of their uh, shares. So we made a, a deal with them. So I actually acquired the, the majority ownership uh, at that factory. So I... Uh, I started to work on that factory. I expanded the factory, the production line. And after a few years, I sold back the, the ownership to the original owners, right? And uh, it was about 2000, uh, 2016, 2017. And during that time, I was really involved into crypto, right? Crypto was pretty new. Yeah. And that's exactly how you know, I got into uh, technology. You know, so around 2017, I, I completely changed my focus into technology. Uh, a little bit about my background. I'm not a, a developer, but uh, my major degree is, is marketing, right? So yeah. I, but uh, I'm very familiar with coding. You know, I, uh, during my college time, you know, I actually passed like two years uh, program for, for computer science as well. And just taking a step back here, Bob, the, the product that you manufactured in China, what was that? It was actually, believe it or not, uh, it was brake pads for cars. 
But I realized interesting. <laughs> everyone say, "Oh wow, why break bad?" Because I, I was, I was actually, you know, I realized that there is a gap, right? Many break bad that actually in the way that it happened. So I was driving my car and I had to keep changing my brake pad because it was making a lot of uh, noises, right? And then. I was thinking, okay, what if I come up with a formula, you know, because obviously there are not a lot of researchers on, on this product. So what if we do some research and come up with a formula that's quiet and it's actually give you a better lifetime, lifespan, right? So that's exactly how that idea was born. And we've done like about a year and a half research and development. And then we came up with that formula. We, you know, we were successful to create that formula. That's, I mean, that's wild. It's just of all things getting into brake pads. So... So you and the team at Sologenic are creating a platform that helps institutions integrate and manage tokenization across their whole business. Now, saying this out loud, you can hear how useful and obviously it's front of mind utility, but it's so broad. What exactly, like give us some real world examples of this. Because when I think of this, I'm like, Mm -hmm. holy shit, this is exactly what we're looking for. In, in the real life, in present day, I've thought of the use case many times. We're going to the store. I'm in Mexico right now. There's 7-Elevens everywhere. I go to 7-Eleven. I want to buy an electrolyte or I want to buy a bottle of tequila and I can pay with an Apple share or I can pay mm-hmm. with something tokenized instead of my Amex or Mexican pesos. So I absolutely love this. I love that you guys are making it happen. But give me some use cases, some examples of how you're helping, of how you're helping real world companies you know, get into the tokenization game of their stocks, bonds, real estate, etc. Mm-hmm. I think there are a lot of benefits when it comes to the tokenization of uh, real world assets. Uh, let's just focus on securities. Let's focus on the stocks because that's the, the focus of uh, Sologenic. Uh, when you're tokenizing assets, there, there are a couple benefits attached to that. Number one, I would say 24-7 trading, which is the most important and important one uh, because you allow people to trade 24-7 versus a traditional market average, which is, you know, which is uh, usually a limited time, yeah. right? Uh, not Huge. only that, yeah, I think that's 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 one of the greatest benefit. The other one is when you are when you are tokenizing asset, you allow fractional tra- trading, and that's going to bring a, a massive liquidity. That's going to unlock a massive liquidity that they're sitting outside of traditional market right now because simply they don't really have enough capital to uh, get into the traditional fin- fin- financial market. For example, uh, think about how many people there are in the world that they would like to purchase, for example, a portfolio of Tesla, Amazon, et cetera, right? But they don't really have that much money. They don't have $10,000. They don't have $20,000. They, they got like 1000 right? So we are unlocking, we are bringing those liquidity into the market, traditional market. And if you want to look at it from a global scale, we are talking about, a massive amount of liquidity. Uh, it's a win-win situation. You are giving uh, micro investors, you know, the opportunity to invest into the stock, and at the same time, you are you are adding more liquidity to the to the market, to a traditional financial market. That's the other one that I really like. Uh, the third one is actually the twenty-four-seven settlement versus the traditional way that usually when you are purchasing any stocks, let's say on the TD platform, for example, or, or RBC in Canada, because you're Canadian, uh, the way that it works, you purchase our stocks, they show you on the UI that you are owning that stocks. But in, in reality, the settlement between the you know uh, broker, brokerage house and the actual bank is going to take 24, 7 to 48 hours, sometimes even 72 hours, right? Yep. Versus T plus versus, two, T plus three, instead of the yeah. classic, but yeah, yeah. So, so true. Versus the new one that if you are settling on, on the blockchain, it's going to happen in a second, two seconds, three seconds, right? More clear, more transparent, and everything is traceable. Everything is traceable on on the blockchain. And the fourth one is, actually, that's what you brought up. So when you're tokenizing assets, they become a crypto asset. So you can have the self, you can have the self uh, custody of those assets. At the same time, you can actually spend those tokenized uh, stocks. And we are actually, uh, you know, introducing 
a prepaid uh, crypto card, which the way that it's going to work, work is you can actually put your asset as a collateral. And then uh, every time that you are using your card, let's say at uh, 7-Eleven that you mentioned, or if you're buying a tequila, <laughs> you know, the, behind the scene, uh, the system is going to liquidate a portion of your tokenized assets to offset your purchase amount. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them, this is what on top of my mind, yeah. No, oh, and th this is this is great. And another thing I'd love to get into just to sort of set the stage as we continue to go down the rabbit hole of Sologenic is Corium, which is the third generation layer one smart blockchain. Why did you and the team need to build? And again, it's not easy building L1s. Building L2 is okay. You know, you have a lot of preemptive, already built tech that you can build upon. Obviously, that's why it's called a layer two and not a layer one. Mm -hmm. But building layer ones, it's a bit of nightmare fuel. Uh, it's actually a lot of nightmare fuel. Very difficult, um, incredibly difficult. And you and the team did that. Why did you guys build Corium? And I'd love if you could explain its relationship to Sologenic and why the two work so well in tandem. The, definitely. So f first of all, I have to clarify that Corium team and Sologenic team they are two different uh, two diff okay. teams, completely separate teams. However, there are some overlaps, right? But uh, the engineering team, which is the most important, uh, basically, team at, at both uh, companies, they are completely separate. You know, the Sologenic engineering team and Corium engineering team, they're not the same at all. And, and some other team members as well. Uh, why we created Corium? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, actually, for two reasons. Reason number one, we wanted to create, you know, uh, we actually look at a few different blockchain when we wanted to start to Sologenic back in 2021, right? And we decided to go with XRP Ledger because it was fast. It was, you know, it was, uh, it was more cost efficient. At the same time, it had some uh, feature like trust line, which allow us to stay in, in compliance with the regulatory framework. Right, I can touch touch on that later on. Uh, however, XRP Ledger doesn't have a smart contract, right? Which uh, we believe that in order to launch, you know, in order to create a tokenized securities gateway and expand it down the road, you need a smart contract because a smart contract is going to unlock a lot of opportunities, right? Totally. Yeah, like lending, borrowing. Uh, settlement, a lot of things, right? So that was one of the reasons that we created Corium and we actually, uh, we, we look at the market. Let me ask you a question, Matt. Have you ever seen any legit adoption of any cryptocurrency or, or blockchain globally? Just give me, a, give, give me an example. No, I really haven't. I mean, yeah, we, we have some examples in El Salvador and other, you know, and other parts like that. But like me personally, besides sending crypto to to contractors or clients or vendors or whatever the case may be across the world. It's much more efficient yeah. than than you know sending a PayPal or a Wise account or a wire transfer. Besides that, you know, transfer of monetary value, I there's really yeah. not um, any. I actually I'm actually exactly but but what I'm referring to is I'm referring to that government level, right? I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Zero. financial institution. Zero. Nothing. And everyone is talking about it. You know, since since the inception of Bitcoin, everybody was talking about global mass adoption, global mass adoption. But have we done anything to make it happen? Absolutely no. Why? Because everyone, you know, we want to go against the government. We want to go against the authority. I'm not, a, I'm not a supporting them. You know, don't call me wrong. I'm not supporting it. But what I'm saying that if you want to read the, the real adoption by, by the fine, you know, financial institution, maybe even by the governments, right? You need to give them some level of control, right? So first of all, Corium is a blockchain, which is, you know, functioning exactly the same way as the other blockchain, right? Yeah. So your, you know, your, your, uh, users' data, users' information, everything is secured, right? They, everything is, is going to stay confidential, right? It's not like when you're interacting with Corium, your information is going to be released to the third party, no. But what we have done with Corium, there is an optional 
KYC and AML feature built on Corio, which if you are a financial institution and if you are building on Corio, so first of all, uh, as a default is always on, like on Corio chain, there's no KYC or AML. But if you are building on Corio, your product on Corio, and you are a financial institution, then you have the opportunity to turn it on. So what it means, imagine there are two financial institution, both of them are regulated, right? Obviously, they need to do KYC. They need to, you know, uh, exchange some level of data together when it comes to the transfer. So it works the same way as a SWIFT. So some some data, like beneficiary name, account holder name, address, date of birth, whatever, are going to be encrypted with every transaction between these two financial institutions. And if financial institution A is sending fund to the B, both of them, they are, you know, they, they have the customer's information, which is required by the authorities. So that helps them to stay in compliance with the AML regulatory framework. Not only that, we actually integrated ISO 222 in Corio, we have, you know, as a matter of fact, we're going to be releasing a demo uh, probably in two weeks. So it's a new standard which has been introduced by ISO, and it's actually it's a mandate for every financial institution. I think by 2024 or, or something like that to to follow that to adopt that, right? So Corio is already in compliance with that. You know, we we actually integrated that standard using a smart token. Yeah. Uh, so end of the day, why we created Corio? First of all, you know, it, it was because of Sologeny. We wanted to create, you know, our own layer one, which should focus is tokenization. And it's a blockchain that is going to be used by financial institutions. So it's a, it's an enterprise great blockchain, which has, you know, with all the regulatory framework, uh, as well. Yeah. I love that. Bob, you are absolutely buzzing right now. You are on a roll, but we need to take a quick break and give a huge shout out to our sponsor of the show. And when we get back, we are going to keep buzzing on Sologenic, get into a little bit about XRP and the future of tokenization. But until then, huge shout out to Prime XPT, longtime friends of CryptoNews.com and longtime sponsors of the Crypto News podcast. Prime XPT offers a robust trading system for both beginners and professional traders. It doesn't matter if you're a rookie or a vet, you can easily design and customize your layouts and widgets to best fit your trading style and take advantage of Prime XPT's highly reliable market data and performance. The promo code for this incredible offer is CryptoNews50 and that will give you 50% of your deposit credited to your trading account. Again, the promo code is CryptoNews50 all one word to receive 50% of your deposit credited to your trading account. And now back to the show with Bob. Bob, let's jump into Ledger for a second. You guys chose to build on XRP. Obviously, we had the Ripple hearing earlier this year, which was massive. XRP Ledger Networks, everyone knows who they are, absolutely huge. Why did you guys choose to build on them? With the plethora of blockchains available, there must have been a couple of reasons why you chose to build with and on Ledger. I'd love to get into that and learn more about this decision. Yes, I actually thought, touch on that very briefly. Uh, when we were doing research, we were doing a lot of research on a blockchain that we wanted to to select to create Sologenic on. We actually had a couple of different options during that time. Ethereum obviously was one of them, but Ethereum is costly. It was pretty slow right now. You know, they actually resolved those those problems, right? Yeah. But during that time, about 2021, 2020, yes, uh, Ethereum was costly. Ethereum was very slow. Uh, however, it had smart contract, right? So which was great. But from the other side, XRP Ledger, it actually had some features that we actually needed during that time. For example, Trustline. A Trustline allow us to stay in compliance with the, with the regulatory framework. The way that it works, if there's a, there's a user that they are tokenizing assets on Sologic platform, right? They obviously, they have to go through a KYC system, KYC and, and onboarding a step. Once that they are successfully passed that step, we are going to whitelist their wallet address on the XRP ledger. So technically, a trust line is going to be created between the customer wallet and the gateway, the issuing gateway. So this allow 
the user to be able to trade that tokenized assets on the DEX as well. So we give you the freedom of trading 24-7 trading of tokenized assets on the you know on DEX. However, if you are if you are interested to trade those assets on asset on the DEX, you need to pass KYC on Sologeny and whitelist your wallet. So this feature is only exists on the XRP ledger, which is a fantastic uh, yeah. feature. Beside that, uh, you know, the XRP ledger has been around. It's one of the oldest chains, you know, in, in, in the crypto industry. And you can see that uh, there, there are a lot of financial institutions that are already practicing, you know, on the ledger or actually using the ledger, right? And that's, that's actually going to prove that XRP ledger, it's a great chain for any financial product such as Sologenic that uh, is aiming to go live. Well said there. Another interesting point about Sologenic, when you check out the website, and the website's beautiful, by the way, but when you go check out the website on the lander, not the like the true, true lander, meaning when you get on and you don't have to scroll, but on the first page when you scroll down, there is some literature on the CBDC tool, which I absolutely mm-hmm. love. I still don't know how I completely feel about CBDCs, Bob. Again, if they were to launch, I'd want a team like you guys to launch it for governments because I trust you guys a hell of a lot more than I trust the govs. But I'd love if you could walk me through the ins and outs of this tool, talk to me about, you know, I know there's a lot of use cases that you can't tell me about because they're coming to fruition and these are with governments and massive financial institutions. But I'd love if you could walk me through sort of your two cents on CBDCs and the importance of the tool and what it does and how it can help governments launch their own CBDC. Mm-hmm. So basically the, the CBDC tokenization tool uh, it's, it's a set of tools that are going to be added to the existing the CBDC sandbox environment, right? I'll give you an example. So why did we launch this, this solution? About a year, a year and a half ago. So we actually we have been approached by uh, Ripple to build a tokenization tool for their existing CBDC sandbox, right? And that shows that there is a, if Ripple is reaching out to us to build that, there is a there is a market for that, right? So that's that's why we came up with with that tool, with CBDC tool, and um, so this is a custom build tokenization solution that is going to be added to any CBDC sandbox environment and allow financial institutions or central banks to tokenize assets while they are transferring, uh, you know, the as funds between financial institutions as well. So interesting. How how far away are we from seeing CBDCs actually get launched? And I mean, obviously China has one that's sort of in beta mode right now, but like, how far away are we, Bob? Do you think this is actually going to happen? Do you think in 10 years, like currency is going to be just a, a joke and the good old days of cold hard cash are going to be gone? Like, what's your what's your two cents on that? Definitely CBDC is going to happen for sure. But I have to be very clear Governments, they're not going to be using XRP Ledger. They're not going to be using Corium. They're not going to be using Ethereum. They're not going to be using any blockchain for CBDC. So mainly CBDCs are being uh, run at this moment on the private ledgers, right? Which that makes sense. You know, if you central banks are yeah. launching their crypto assets like a stable code or, or any other crypto assets, they, they want to have the control. So they're not going to be launching on any third party. They're going to be launching it yeah. on their own. A lot of people, they get really excited. Say, oh, CBDC is going up on, on XRP Ledger. CBDC is going up on Ethereum, on Solana. No, that's not the reality. Reality is yeah, yeah, it's yeah. going to be <laughs> private ledger. So I have to clarify that. But the good news is this is going to happen. For sure, 100%. It's really hard for me to think about the way that people are actually transferring funds at this moment, right? Think about it in 10 years. It's really hard for me to to believe that it's going to stay the same, right? right? Like, it's so outdated. You know, you should just go online, transfer your your your, your fund through SWIFT from one country to another country. If you're lucky, it's going to be transferred in 24 hours. If you're not lucky, it's going to be transferred in 72 hours. And yeah. maybe you get a stock somewhere on the way, 
who knows? And then you have to go trace it through your mind. This is just insane, you know? This is. Yeah, it's archaic. It's wild. Oh, yeah. What about the transparency and the surveillance part, though? You know, like what about the average Joe and Josephine who put. Uh, the average Joe and Josephine probably don't give a shit if the government sees every little move they make. And for me, this is honestly relatively hypocritical because I'm someone who uses credit card every single chance I get. Like if I have an opportunity to stack some points, I'm going to stack some points. So I use my Amex or my Visa or MasterCard or whatever for absolutely every purchase unless I can't mm-hmm. and then I use cash. So with that being said, it's like I don't even know why I care about this because if the government really wanted to know every little move I make, they could and very well do. But what's your opinion on the whole surveillance aspect. You know, that's very sad, but I don't think crypto is going to resolve that because if you want to look at it from the government perspective, right, they never allow any technology to come and take the control out of their hands, right? Yeah. This this is sad, you know. So for that reason being said, even with CBDC, even you know, with, with other products that they're going to be building on, on the blockchain, it's still government, they're going to have the full control. They want to make sure they can freeze your wallet at any point, point of time. They want to make sure any, any transfer that you are making, they are, they are fully aware of that. They want to make sure that any time if they decide to cancel a transfer, they are able to do that. I think this this is the way that it's going to be. And we should be a little bit realistic about it, right? There is no reason that the you know, governments, they they want to basically give up from the level of control that they have. No, yeah, that's, that's totally true. Bob, we are getting a little tight for time here. A couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. Two more and then we're definitely going to have to get you back on for round two because we've barely scratched the surface here. You guys released some news not too long ago. More specifically, it was you with a great Twitter thread. Sologenic will be listing on some pretty big juicy exchanges soon. Obviously, you cannot let us know which ones, but is there anything you can tell us? Can you give us timelines, anything of the like? Anything that the Sologenic community and fans can look forward to regarding the listings on massive centralized exchanges, which is coming up pretty darn soon. Definitely. You know, uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to release the name, but I can just mention that we have started a new round of reach out to the tier one and, and top tier two exchanges, right? And we have been very, very successful with that. And a couple of great exchanges, they have been confirmed, right? Which unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to release the name. However, they are going to happen, you know, some in December, some in January, and, and some in February. And I'm talking about both assets. They're going to, you know, they're going to list Solo and Corio at the same time. So, these are, these are, you know, unfortunately I can't <laughs> disclose the name, but yes, these are great exchanges. I'm, I'm personally very excited because it's going to allow us to have a, a better, better reach globally. I love that. And last question here, the future of tokenization, a very broad one, but what does the future of tokenization look like in your eyes? I'd love if you could speak on this from sort of the consumer and institutional aspect. If you are a CFO or CEO of an institution, how do you look at tokenization moving forward? And uh, I'd love if you could also answer this from the consumer side of things. How will this affect our lives moving forward as well? That's actually a great question. Short answer is, I think, I believe everything is going to be tokenized, you know, by 2030, right? And if I want to dive in a little bit more into details from the company perspective, when you're tokenizing assets, it allows you to, let's say, let's, let's talk about the use case, real estate. A developer can actually raise funds through tokenization, right? So if you have a fantastic real estate project that you are trying to sell, you can actually use blockchain and tokenize that project and raise funds. From consumer perspective, it's actually, it's easier. You know, you're helping, you know, all these investors and, and users in order to participate into these tokenization projects as well. And yeah, I think it's going to make everything easier for both sides. I love that. Bob, you absolutely crushed this. Really appreciate you coming on and can't wait for round two. Uh, until then, can you please let our listeners know where they can find you, Sologenic, and Corium online and on socials? You know, if, uh, if you, anyone wants to talk with me, you can actually come on Twitter, not Twitter, X, x.com. <laughs> <laughs> my, my handle is Bob Rass X. 
I actually had that X at the end forever, so I didn't copy Elon Musk. Uh, sorry, just <laughs> just worked worked like a charm. Actually, my pre all my previous company they had X, believe it or not, you know, in, in the past. So <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah. So Bob Press X, I'm available there. Tag me. If you have any question, I'm I'm glad to answer. Amazing, Bob. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Truly a great episode. Definitely have some homework to do, and uh, can't wait to have you on for round two. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, folks. What's an episode with Bob Rass, co-founder of Solo Genic? He was dropping knowledge bombs left, right, and center. Anything on the tokenization of real-world assets, 24/7 trading, the future of tokenization, liquidity crisis, Ledger, XRP, you name it, we covered it. Huge shout out to Bob and the team for making this happen. To the listeners, if you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope you did, please do subscribe. It would mean the world to the team and I. Speaking of the team, love you guys. Used to ask my amazing sound editor. Thank you so much. And back to the listeners, love you guys. Keep on growing those bags and keep on staying healthy, wealthy, and happy. Bye for now, and we'll talk soon.